uh, Merry Merry Christmas 2020 love from love hope from hope and peace from peace it's time for love's impartation and the impartation of love comes from his dog of love the most regal eagle of the eons is he so it's time to arise and it's time to celebrate the kingdom age covenant has been given and uh, God says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. I'll write my law and my love upon your heart. Beyond that, no one will ever need to be taught of me anymore. All shall know me from the least to the greatest. And we all have. When our, our love was alive as a child, as Jesus said, that's how you got to be born again. To, to not let your love die. Let it be moving and grooving to love's most perfect preparation of his peace found in Jeremiah from the world's only important kingdom age prophet. So praise the Lord that let the year of Jubilee be proclaimed afar. Go forth then all ye messengers of love while declaring that the love of God has now been manifested one very last time for the rescue of mankind's bewildered who are a real embittered race of sinners. Uh, unloving people, critical and judgmental, pointing fingers at each other all the time. So it's time for his exploding grace to peak. The climax of the ages has come. And I, as one whose eyes are dull and red of wine, hold the scepter of all authority, Genesis 49, 12. One who has been transgressed by wine, but the just shall live by my faith, Habakkuk 2. Yea, let the heavens echo the glad news of this gospel of our Lord's praise, for he is love. Let those who love and those who love are born of him and know God because he is love. So let the earth resound with man's most cheerful worship that humbles all righteous loving souls. For God loved his people so much and his, deep was, his love was so deep, it was unfathomable, never had a bottom which has now been revealed as, as he has long ago presented people with him in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, again, who so soon be amongst us. And for he is pointing people of all faiths towards love eternally, for that is who he is. So here, O oh God, is a fallen being, and that is myself, and it's all of you too. But here, O oh God, am I a fallen being who well knows that sin is a direct violation of your written law. And I praise him evermore that all sin shall be forgiven us. Uh, Jesus said, all sin except unforgivable sin of letting your love die. For the sinner has presumed upon your government and touched with impious hands the flaming sword and has dared and so have i dared vengeance and trifled with god's will i've contended with eternal and irrevocable justice would i get back at all of us if we keep spitting in god's face we can make it in the heaven by the skin of our teeth if we still have some love alive in us but uh we'll be in heaven's slums no doubt if if we've done nothing for the kingdom of love is, is, is your love moving? Ask yourself this. Man has fallen. He lies bruised, mangled, and expiring by the folly of his own wretched ways. But yet, O oh God, you have created him and all of us as immortal beings, angels in the flesh, or demons if we decide to be that. And uh, intellectual are we. Hence, we are accountable. Spiritual, uh, hence, we are. And... Uh, we lie upon the verge of a bottomless abyss if we let our love die out, where, if we fall, we would feel terrible immortal pangs, and for a few fleeting seconds in hell of flame, we would feel as though we were dwelling in continual, everlasting, remitting woe. Nor should any enlightened souls ever forget that because Jesus Christ uh, compassion has been what it was that the prophet Isaiah prophesied, saying, A bruised reed he shall not break, and the smoking flax he shall not quench, until he brings forth judgment unto truth. The reeds are now bruised, 
but not entirely broken, and the flickering blaze of the smoking flax is mushrooming, even though it's steadily expiring, but still hope exists. And it really does kingdom ages ahead, and it will arise if people will embrace his messenger who I am. Because the message is that it shall be as Eden ahead of us if we will catch the whirlwind of love that has come in forth. Blessedness is can fill ourselves and new understandings, the tide of new understandings is with us and his blessedness will fill ourselves. But we must leave the the place where we have been and go out to the deep. That is where he is, the priceless pearl of great reward, our treasure of excellence, and the excellence of treasure is he. People, he is arising and the, as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, and he arises on his great white cloud of Revelation 14, the same great white cloud of Matthew 24. His kingdom age has started. His word has opened anew. Daniel 12, 9 said it was only closed until the time of the end. And Jesus said, that unless his word came forth to cut time short, and only God's word can cut time short, people, that no flesh could be saved. It was the total uh, oblivion that he spoke of in Matthew 24, 22. No birds, no fish, no man left upon earth. Zephaniah 1, 1. That is what's ahead if we will not race towards the finish line that is awaiting us at the gates of love, which is heaven on earth, if we will invite love within to light our way and so that spiritual racism on earth can die. So praise the Lord that Man can be saved before dying, and so shall it be. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. Same understandings restored unto all people with ears to hear. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I'm not Jesus, but I'm speaking his word. And praise the Lord that our Lord of all shall always be near all the brokenhearted. Muhammad said that uh, his people of Islam would belong to another that sounds like Islam when a book came proving God's mercy, and he knew it was Jeremiah 31. He said there would never be a prophet ahead. And Paul said that when those words come, I will be your God, you will be my people, that uh, all faith on earth would be obsolete because the kingdom age covenant has been given to all mankind, and that straightens up all distortionality of love's understanding because we've only been seeing through a glass darkly, only knowing in part. Now the wise may shine as the stars in these days of the latter day Daniel, who I am. I'm Daniel, uh, Daniel 12, 13. And because the message of Malachi 3, 1 has been given, the kingdom age covenant to all mankind, saying, I will be your God, you will be my people to all people, because God is not a respecter of men and he loves us all equally. Because that has come, now all faith on earth, uh, distorted faith, uh, and that's what Muhammad said, it, it, it'll get rid of the distortions. And uh, so he knew, but he was sworn to secrecy. He could not uh, say the fullness. By the way, that is written in the Hadith. And so shall it be that our Lord of all shall always be near all, all broken-hearted people. And he will save all those crushed in spirit during the reaping of his great harvest, if we will only allow his love to be as our warmest uh, blanket. Uh, it's time that we put away our old uh, racist religions, condemning one another. Uh, 70 times 7,777 7 times. Forgiveness is love. Love is forgiveness. They are one and the same thing. You cannot have one without the other. So praise the Lord, the harvest begins. And from his mercy seat, uh, he who rides the white horseman of Revelation 6, he has a bow and he has an uh, arrow. And I am the arrow of Isaiah 49, 4, who has wasted all of his time in vain. That was never Jesus Christ Almighty. Even in the garden when he uh, prayed for our oneness, he knew damn well we would never unite. <laughs> he wasn't dumb, he was God. But he knew that we would not unite. He knew that he would unite us by sending 
his kingdom age word that was written by Jeremiah to begin the kingdom age and tear down all kingdoms of man. Jeremiah 1.10, all imaginations not built solely upon his unconditional love. Haggai 2.2, 2, both say the same thing. And now love can explode in new ways. And know that the prophet Cahil Gabran said this, for that which has remained unknown to men for an eon may be disclosed to one man in but a moment. Unto he who would restore all things, Matthew 11, uh, 17, 11, the Elijah task servant, would come revelation of revelation. And I've heard uh, churches that I used to go to, there will never be new revelation in this world. Well, you know, you can't make bricks if you don't have sun shining and you got hay and you got mud. You got to have the right ingredients. So you got to have new revelation. And the revelation that is coming now is of love. Let it, let it, let it flow. Because love is the magnificence of our Savior. And he was slain before the foundation of the earth for all of us. So I adjure you in the name of Jesus Christ Almighty, arise in love. Uh, the adoration thereby that he is pouring out as the son of love to destroy all gross darkness. It, it will bring forth his living waters anew as a, as seas of his charity and rivers uh, without end of his benevolence and ponds covering the earth uh, of his tranquility and peace that he would bring to all of us if we would only believe one thing that he's always loved us all equally. He's never been a respecter of people. The Bible plainly says that it is a sin to be a respecter of each other. You know, to love some people more than others. If God loved the Christians more than those ones, or these ones more than these ones, his whole word would be a liar and God would be a liar.